Ladies and gentlemen, today is the 5th of March 2025 and it is the third day of the Mobile World Congress 2025 taking place in Barcelona, Spain. The excitement and the energy continue. There is a rich history behind the Mobile World Congress. The name of the event has evolved over the years. The event's origin traces back to the business conference on Pan-Europe Digital Cellular Radio held in Brussels in 1987. The name GSM World Congress was first used in 1990 when the event was held in Rome. For the next few years, the event moved to a new city each time, passing through Nice, Berlin, Lisbon, Athens and Madrid before setting in 1996 in Cannes. In France, the event was held in Cannes for 10 consecutive years with the name evolving to 3GSM World Congress from 2003. It was in 2006 that the event moved to Barcelona and now of course from 2025 onwards there will be another Mobile World Congress in addition to Barcelona, Shanghai and Kigali and Las Vegas and that is MWC Doha in Qatar. And now we find ourselves at the Oracle Communications booth which looks fabulous. Oracle is working heavily in the area of 5G and connectivity. Of course, Oracle has been synonymous in the past with its relational database. Here we have a fabulous cyber truck at display at the Oracle booth. Uh, it also has a drone uh, in the trunk of uh, the cyber truck. The cyber truck itself looks quite hefty and apparently is fully connected uh, with the 5G technology. And uh, it's quite a hefty truck, looks strong and there's an expert sitting inside and explaining the connectivity uh, tech stack and the capabilities to uh, a gentleman inside. And these are the capabilities of the cyber truck, the way it is connected, the way it can go to the remote places and so on. Uh, it, it's a fabulous display, it's very impressive from Oracle, so good show Oracle. There we go with the cyber truck at the Oracle booth. And this is the OLED booth who seem to be experts in foldable screens. Let's listen in from an expert. So in here we are showing all the OLED, OLED products. That OLED is a company itself that works with Samsung and it makes all these uh, foldable screens. So basically this is the screen itself. itself. You can see it's very lasting, very foldable and it's also translucent which is an important fact for this here, sorry. And here you can see how whole display, you can see the whole camera, but in the new one, you, it's UPC, which means under panel camera. And this means that the screen um, has its pixels, but these pixels are separated from, from each other. So you can control it like separately. So when you have to, use your camera you can see where's the camera right now it's actually right here and when you have you want to use it the pixels will disappear and it will let you to the full translucent screen with which will make your camera see you and you see your camera so basically this is the main fact about this device here we have the demonstration of the folding it it's it been it's been running since the first day of Mobile World Congress and it's, as you can see, it's, it looks as new. So yeah. And in here, mainly, it's again with the OLED uh, screen. You can see how it has improved. This is the older version of the flip phone and this is the newer one. And you can see it's smoother and you, in the line, in the line, it's like more, it's kind of disappearing. You can see it as much. And also the shape of it, this is a little bit bigger because it's in square shape, which lets you to a more, a bigger screen. So yeah, and both can fold. And lastly, we have the Flex G and the Flex S. These ones are the, the new advices of Samsung are prototypes, which means that they are not in sale, but it's to show what Samsung is capable of. Basically, it, they work as tablets. So Flex G, it's a tablet that folds itself by itself. So the screen will go inside and the screen will go also inside. And they will, it will protect all the screens. And this one is the Flex S, which will make always the screen on the right. It's always showing. So you will fold, fold it like the S shaped form. 
and you will you can see anytime this one screen and then it will let you also if you unfold it to a normal tablet so that will be all <laughs> thank you so much and as you might have guessed we are outside the android booth from google Google is also displaying its AI capabilities uh, with the Gemini, which is its flagship AI model. Uh, this mascot or the logo itself uh, looks very cute, it's very famous. I believe it was earlier called the Bug Droid, but now it's formally called the Bot. Welcome to the booth of Mavenir, which is a world-renowned firm in the area of R&D. Uh, in the world of telecom with the RAN solutions uh, as an original equipment manufacturer they offer RAN solutions as well as uh, core network solutions with applications and everything running on the edge as well and everything which is scalable uh, let's listen in to a very famous person from Mavenir ladies and gentlemen we have the pleasure of uh, meeting the president and the CEO of Mavenir Mr. Pradeep Kohli uh, Pradeep, uh, please tell us what's going on at Mavenir and a message for all the people who love R&D. Ah, you know, Mavenir has always been known for doing innovative stuff. I think you can look at the screen up there. We have done a lot of world's first, uh, you know, many, many things, including world's first voice over Wi-Fi, LTE, you know, packet core, now open RAN. And now we are bringing AI, a lot of AI applications onto the network as well and using AI to do a lot of these applications and enhancing them as well. So good stuff, you know, a lot of new innovation happening and I guess uh, stay in touch. <laughs> Are you bullish on the 5G and the upcoming 6G and any message to everybody, what's your vision of the future? I'm, I'm more bullish about, you know, the uh, migration to cloud and automation and AI because, you know, as you know, 5G, 6G is all about the last mile and how fast you can do things. But obviously, you, you need more applications who want to do new things, right? If you don't have applications, then it doesn't really help. You know, you could have a uh, lot of supply, but if there's no demand, that doesn't help, right? So we kind of, and if you look at 5G, not many people have been able to monetize it and able to generate a lot of money with it. So we need to create now new demand and applications so that it, it brings up uh, for everybody, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the president of Core at Mavenir, Mr. Ashok Khuntia with us. Uh, welcome Ashok. Uh, now Mavenir's core is well established, is mature. Everybody is talking about AI. How are you marrying your core to the AI? Okay, hey Prashant, yeah, you know, nice, nice to meet you and it is a good question. You know, as you mentioned that we have got a comprehensive port, uh, portfolio in the, in the core network and we have got the packet core, we have got the voice and messaging products. We have got the charging and billing products. So we have got the entire portfolio. Now the question is, how do we kind of make it AI enabled? So what we are thinking of building an AI layer on top of these core products, basically add an, add an AI agent to each of the network function and call, collect all the inter intelligence from these network functions and feed them into a centralized AI model where it will be able to do many different things. So one of the things to manage the network, you need to know in where the different problems are happening. Somebody complains that, okay, there is a voice call, I'm not able to browse. And right now, I mean, the individuals kind of debug the system. It takes, it's a time consuming. So what we are planning to do in this centralized AI agent is going to isolate the problem, where exactly the problem is happening. And, and, and it, is, it will be able to do that in real time. And in the next phase, once it knows the problem, I mean, how does it fix it? Maybe there is a configuration problem somewhere. Maybe there is a microservice which is not working properly. Maybe there is a overload control happening somewhere. Maybe it needs to scale out some microservice. So these are the things that it can do. So this will greatly reduce the operations cost for the operators. And now we are at the HTC booth, which not only produces mobiles, but gives uh, AR, VR solutions, like this gentleman is enjoying over here. And uh, look at this girl who's uh, dancing and uh, the background screen uh, changes according to her dance steps and there are uh, dance partners with her on the screen. They dance along with her as per her movements, uh, which looks fabulous, doesn't it? Uh, this is a delight to watch and shows that the technology can really enhance uh, the small joys of life uh, like dancing. And the lady continues once again with a flourish. 
uh, brings up the fireworks and then brings them down as well. Once again, a final flourish. Beautiful. And we are back to the OLED booth where there's a scheduled magic show and a robotic uh, dog dance, believe it or not. So here we go, enjoy. So after the dogs and the magic show, we are at the Huawei booth uh, in the Hall 1. It can hardly be called a booth. It's uh, a lion's share of the Hall 1 which has been occupied by Huawei. It's a huge booth with the nice little messaging for the future. And that is accelerating industrial intelligence. Uh, you know, there are hostesses out here who scan your cards, special ones, before you can get entry into the booth. Ladies and gentlemen, at MWC 2025 in Barcelona, Spain, we have this wonderful company called Telesat from Ottawa, Canada. And we have Matthew Speed with us, who's a senior engineer working in the Lightspeed project from Telesat. Matthew, welcome to the show and Thank tell you. us uh, what Lightspeed is all about. Sure, I can give you a quick sort of overview. So Lightspeed is basically a low Earth orbit uh, platform where we're, we're launching satellites beginning service, uh, global service in uh, 2027. The network is designed to be a carrier grade Ethernet MEF compliance service. So what we're doing with that is allowing our customers to design from a layer two level down their own capacity in terms of how they want to do contention, how they want to do quas, how they want to define services to their customers. So we're a pure carrier's carrier. That's the best way to think about us. Um, the service is Canadian in terms of the satellites being built by our, our friends MDA over in Canada. And then we will be launching uh, through 2026, over into 26 and 27th for the start of service. Um, it's high throughput, Ethernet layer two service, carrier grade quality. That's the best way to, to summarize everything as quickly as possible. And um, we'll be looking forward to working with everybody out there around the world who needs connectivity, who needs that high throughput of guaranteed SLA driven quality service. So we start launching in 2026. Uh, obviously we'll be doing orbit raising and bringing services onto there, doing our own tests and validations of that. But in terms of global coverage, that's going to be in 2027. So at the end of 2027, we'll be able to offer people a full SLA-driven global coverage network solution. So we call it a day to day three at MWC 2025 by visiting this place called Plaza de España at Barcelona, followed by some dinner and drinks.